Barbara. And I'm Karen, and we're the Sync Sisters. This is our tech bit on Google Sheets pivot tables. So we've been working through our series um, on the Google app, Google Sheets. Right. Um, and all, there's just so many incredible things you can do with data, and we've been doing little special in, uh, videos on the different areas. Right. Uh, and today we're covering pivot tables. Which Very exciting. I didn't, I didn't realize how fun it was to analyze data in different yeah, ways. And yeah. So we'll, you have really delved into this and tell us what a pivot table is. Right. Well, a pivot table um, is a way to look at data differently than it's organized in your main spreadsheet. Um, okay. You can extract data and you can actually like pivot it. So something pivot that was it. in a column is now in a row, something in a row is now in a column. Okay. You can summarize things. And it's a way of taking um, that data and extracting it to look at it differently without altering your original data. You know, you know, and you may be getting this data coming down from a main computer system at your company, um, whether you're in sales or you're a teacher right. or you're a scientist or insurance or whoever you are. Yeah. You know, your company may have a big database of information about what you do. But you just want to look at You just want things. to look at it. You get all this information, and right. you're like, how do I deal with this? So it's a way of, of looking at it, and it's very useful, and we're going to take a look at yeah. it now. And thank you so much for taking the time to figure it out. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for thanking me. Yes, my head is spinning with numbers right, right now because we don't do a lot of data analysis. No, <laughs> Luckily, Google does a lot of yes. that for us. So And we're good at it now. Yeah. All right. All right. So, so let's, let's get, to get work. out to work here. So the first thing we're going to do is, is we're going to go to our drive. our drive. We like to start at Google Drive. You we can like start. Drive. You could go to sheets right. Google dot sh or sheets .google com. Right. But we like to come here because we keep everything <coughs> organized. We have all our different um, things. And here we're going to go into the Sheets Advanced folder and find Mrs. Gillette's fourth grade English class yeah. spreadsheet. <laughs> and this information um, may have come down from a main yeah. database at my school. Right. Um, in this case, we just... Right, and we're, we're again, looking at uh, student, school data, but you right. could be any, any It could be data. any data that you have. So right. we have our spreadsheet here. Um, if you've watched any of our other videos on Google Sheets, you've seen this throughout all of them. It has test scores, it's really getting scores. fancy now. <laughs> fancy, you got a bunch of spark lines in yeah. there. Or sparkles, because when you auto <laughs> type in spark line, it autocorrects to sparkles. That's right, that's right. <laughs> So the first thing is you've got to organize your data properly. And we've talked about this in a lot of the videos. And um, in this case, and in really in any case, it's probably good that the first row is your column headers. Okay. Um, for using pivot tables, that's pretty important. Um, I used to have a title up here in row one and a few spaces, but I, I've changed that. And so I've got it here at the top. Um, okay. And in that case, you can just click anywhere and it'll take all the data or you could take a subset of the data so if you're not going to have your titles in the first line then you got to make sure that you click and drag from your titles right. over just make sure that either your titles are in the first row or you're clicking and dragging and the titles is the first line that you're doing okay in this case we're just going to be somewhere in the data okay and we're going to go ahead and we're going to choose from the data menu pivot table Pivot table. And here we are. Oh my gosh, it's breathtaking. It's breathtaking. It looks <laughs> kind of Greek right now. But you'll notice that what's come up is a blank tab on your sheet down here at the bottom. You'll see it created a new tab. It names it pivot table and then the number. 28. <laughs> I've been busy. I've been analyzing data, creating <laughs> lots of pivot charts to understand it better. Sure. Um, so. This is our report area over here, and it looks, you know, a little loose. Um, it doesn't put uh, grid lines in automatically, but we can do that, which okay. makes it look a little bit better. So we're going to go to it's easier yeah, to look. We're going to go to the view menu and choose grid lines. So okay. now at least it looks a little normal, but it does have um, outlines around the area that is actually the pivot table. It also brings up over on the right side here the report editor. Okay. Okay. And just. just Similar to the chart editor. Right. And, you know, again, if you X that by mistake and you're like, how the heck do I get that back? In this case, you just click on the table somewhere. Oh, okay, cool. And it'll bring it up. <clears throat> the first thing it shows you is the range that you have selected. So we're off of the main sheet, okay. which is the name of the sheet that we started on. A1, so cell A1 through R35. That's where the all of our data okay. is. Because we didn't pre-select an area, it took all the data, okay? Uh -huh. You can go in and edit that range later if you need to. So we'll, we'll look at that. 
And then the first thing we want to do is we're going to create um, we're going to create a pivot chart uh, or pivot table to show ages per period. We want to know okay. how old are the kids in my in my two classes. I want to know. So this is where you're going to take out just the data that you want to analyze out That's of that right. bigger chart. That's right. If you remember our main sheet shows the students and their ages. Well, it's really hard for me to see, well, and the period, what, what, how old are the kids in my classes? I can't really tell. How many eight-year-olds do I have? Do I have a young class, an old class? Right. So this pivot table is going to help us with that. So we're going to go in and we're going to first um, add a row, okay? okay? And notice that our titles are showing up. Oh, you guess you could pick whatever you wanted. Right. And again, if they aren't showing up, either row one isn't your titles, or when you selected a subset of data, the first row wasn't your titles. Okay. So you got to make sure of that. And we're going to go in and we're going to pick our row to be age. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a row for every unique data that's in that field, okay. in that row. So we have eight, nine, and 10-year-olds. For example, I'm going to go in and I'm going to edit the data and I'm going to change somebody to age 11. Okay? And I'm going to show you how it automatically added an 11 column. Perfect. Okay. Or row. Because it was a different number. That's right. A unique so, number. That's right. Value. Mm -hmm. And it's showing the grand total down here at the bottom. Once we get the values, then that'll make more sense and we'll take a look at that. Okay. okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a column. So we want to put some columns across here and we're going to add a column for period. Okay. And it's going to show all the periods, all the values that were in the column called period. Okay. So we have first period, second period, and what about this one? What is that? Well, that's a blank because <clears throat> I didn't pre-select the data. If we go back to our main sheet, you're going to see in this row, there's oh. one that's blank. So it's putting it as a column. That's right. So I want to change that. It thinks it's a value. That's right. And I can take that out um, in the filtering. So I can, Or you can do the range. Or you can do the range. Right. Let's change the range. That's an easier in this case. So we're yes. going to edit the range, and we're going to change it to 34. No, 32, 32 I think it was. Yeah. And we're going to say, OK. And now it took that out. Perfect. So we have just our students, right. Okay, which is great. So if you look, notice something kind of funky about your chart, it's probably because you have a blank field that it's That's treating right. as a value. That's Just go right. back and look at the main sheet and right. you can edit it. And maybe you want to change your range. And we're going to look later how you can also filter by not ha including any blanks. Right. Um, what this also did for, well, we won't go into that now. Yeah. Never mind. All okay. Right. Okay. So we have that. And then we got to add a value because we don't see anything in here, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go to values and we're going to add a field. And what we're going to add here is age, because that's what we're looking at. Okay. And, oh, wow, what's it doing? Well, we don't have a 48-year-old. So what we're going to, we're going to have 48 <laughs> eight-year-olds, that's for sure. What it's doing by default is it's summarizing by the sum. It's okay. It's adding up all of the values of the eight-year-olds. Yeah, that's great. But we don't want that. And we're going to just take a look at the different ways that you can look at information <clears throat> here. I mean, um, you know, summarizing you is add adding up. it yeah. up. Um, you can do averages, maximum, minimum, variations, and so on. A subset of the formulas that you can use mm -hmm. um, or functions within Sheets. Right. We're going to choose count A. Count, count A. A will, for every instance of it, will count it as one. Okay. Okay. So now oh, that, that we've looks done better. that, that looks better. <laughs> So we can see that, um, you know, in our first period, well, look at they're exactly the same for eight and nine year olds, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Um, and exactly the same for, oh. I, I guess I didn't do that quite right. Yeah. So they're exactly the same, but that's yeah. the way our data is. Right. So, um, and then we have that one 11 year old that we yeah. put in. Which is, why is he in a class with yeah. an eight year old? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> uh, so that's how you take a look at that. And then. You know, we can add a filter to this. So we can say, well, let's take a look at um, at, at further limiting Condensing, what we're seeing. Yeah. So we could go in here and we could filter and we could say, well, let's look at days absent. Oh. Let's see um, where are the kids that are, you know, who are yes. the kids that are absent. So we're going to go in here. We're going to say days absent. And what we want to show is maybe maybe let's show all the kids who are who've never been absent. So first we're going to clear the values because it selects all of them, mm -hmm. and we're going to say zero. So I want to see all the kids that have never been absent. Okay, all right. So okay. three and 
It's a little different. In it's each a little period, different yeah. in each period. And maybe I want to come in and I want to say, nope, I want to see those that were absent. Uh, maybe absent more than three or four times. Three or four yeah. times. Oh, well, not bad. There you go. Pretty even between the classes. <clears throat> you can kind of get an idea. And so this is just an idea of analyzing the data. Right, sure. Of how you might do that. You could go do anything you wanted to do by goofing around with these different variables. That's right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at naming this pivot table. So we're going to come down here into our tab at the Meaning bottom. You don't like pivot table 28? <laughs> yeah, we don't like pivot table 28. And you can put a um, whatever you want to put in for um, ages per period or something. You know, okay. whatever you want to name it that makes sense to you. Sure. Okay. Uh, we're going to take a look at a different pivot chart now, or pivot table. Yep. So we're going to go back to our main sheet, and this one we're going to look at genders per period. How am I slanted boy, girl? You know, okay. And I've got that information over here in the gender field. Okay. So again, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to the data menu, and I'm going to turn on pivot, or go to pivot table. It's going to come up and show me my pivot table. I'm going to go ahead and view my grid lines again so I see my grid lines. Yep. And I'm going to go ahead and for rows, I'm going to say gender. So I've got males and females in my class. Okay. And then I'm going to go to columns and I'm going to add period. All right. Okay. Again, we've got that blank period in there. So I'm going to go ahead. Show the other way to get rid of it. Yeah, that. right. We can go down here and we can filter. Um, we can go to period. And we can say we do not want to see any blanks. So that's the other way to get rid of it. Right. Yep. So we went first period, second period, but no blanks. The first time we gone. showed you to edit the range. This right. You way. can edit the range, but maybe you don't want to do that because you're using the range for something else. You just want to exclude any mm -hmm. uh, blanks from that period right. portion yep. of your pivot Perfect. table. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to value. Okay. So we're going to go to value and we're going to add... Um, Gender, just like we did in the last one. Mm -hmm. And again, we don't want to sum, we want to count. Okay. So now we can see how many male and females we have in each class. Okay. Each period. Pretty even. Yeah. It's pretty even all the way across the board, which is great. Okay. Okay. Now we might want to create a chart to go along with that. All right. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a line chart. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click anywhere inside of our data mm -hmm. and we're going to go up to insert chart. We have a great video on we Google, do. Sheet Google Sheets. Google Sheets charts. Which you can find out all about how to you customize You can have a these. lot of fun with charts. Right. We're going to do um, a line column. A line column. A line. Do the a line. chart type too. Chart type line, which we're going to take one of the recommended, but we could come in here and we can do different things. Actually, that was for the other one. We want to do chart oh, right. too. Okay. Here we're going to just do this, um, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to change um, first period, second period. Oh no, I guess that's fine. What we're going to do, what I want to do, is I want to make this look a little differently. I want to have bars for uh, first period and second period, and then for the grand total, I want it to be a line. Okay. So I'm going to come down here to my series. And I'm going to do first period. I'm going to do second period also as um, a bar or a column. So now that's going to show up here. Oh, good. And then my grand total is <clears throat> a line. Okay. So, and then insert and up so comes fun. my chart. <laughs> Isn't it fun? And you can move it around and you can size it and do all the different things you can do with the chart. So this is kind of nice because within your main sheet, you can, you know, come to all your different... Um, tabs down below that you maybe have created and take a look at your different things. Here's test scores by period. Here's, you know, a bunch of different things. So right. it's kind of nice that you can have that ability right within yeah. your main sheet of and ways of looking it at it. with it and you can just, oh, quickly, oh, wait, I want to check that's how right. that's doing. That's right. Because as you edit the data on the main sheet, it affect, it does it on the anything you've created, the charts that's right. or tables, right? That's right. Yeah, right, which we'll look at. We didn't look at the dashboard yet. But putting them all onto a dashboard, we did kind of briefly look at it. Here's our dashboard here. But it will right. it'll automatically update. Anytime you change anything. Well, it will do it on any chart. Any chart, change. yeah, anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere you change the data, it'll automatically update any of your charts, any of your pivot tables, right. which is very nice. Okay? And then we're going to create one more that's a little bit different. So we're going to go back to our main sheet. This one we're going to, we're going to we want to take a look at the test scores 
for class, district, and state. Okay. Okay. And they're down here at the bottom of our sheet. They're, although a little bit, you know, it's hard to tell here what exactly is going yeah. on. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to create a pivot chart to extract that data so that we can create a nice chart. So we're going to go ahead again up to the data menu, pivot table. Okay. We're going to pull up <clears throat> our pivot table. And for row, we're going to add the field student. Okay, and the reason we're doing that is because our class average, our district average, and our state average, they all show up, the labels for them, in the student column. Okay. Okay, and we're going to end up turning off all of those students. We don't need any columns because what we're going to do is we're going to add a value across the top for each one of the tests. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to do test one. And then we're going to add another field and we're going to say test two. And now they're going to come up across the top and we're going to do test three and we're going to do test four. Okay. Okay. So now we have all of our tests across this way. We're, remember in our, well, I guess that's the same way it was in our other spreadsheets. So it doesn't matter. Okay. And we're going to do is we're going to filter it by student. And now we're going to take out everybody except for the ones we want. So we're going to clear it and we're going to go down and we're going to find class average, district average, and state. And these are all alphabetical. Yep. And now you can see there that we have just the sum of those three things. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Probably wouldn't want a grand total on this one. You're exactly right. And you so can turn those off. Right, right up here, we can under student Sometimes it makes off. sense, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't, right. So that's showing up there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a line chart for the for this. So we're going to create a line chart to take a look at what this looks like. So we're going to go up here to chart. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go to chart types and we're going to take a line chart and insert it in here. So, so you can see, in this case, how your class is doing compared to the district place, and state. class, district, and state. And now let's take a look at um, doing a little filtering. Let's say we want to add a student in. Let's say we want to see how oh, yeah. somebody is doing compared. So let's take a look at Allie, Ali, and Allie. Let's look at both of them. Okay. So now we've added them onto our scenario, and we can see um, how they're doing compared to all of the other averages. Oh, yeah, that's So great. you can see that these. it's a really nice ability to... Yep pull information from that spreadsheet and look at it differently. It really oh, is a lot easier. It's amazing easier. what you can do. Yeah, it's really a lot easier. Yeah. And you can go in and you can turn those two off, and you can turn somebody else on, right. and everything will reflect as you change things. And again, it will also reflect after you change the data on the main sheet. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can see that pivot tables allow you to look at your data um, as a subset and maybe make things a little bit clearer for your Right, so you can analyze your data any way you want. Hope you've enjoyed learning with the Sync Sisters. Thanks for watching the Sync Sisters Tech Bit. And please subscribe to our channel.